So what we have here is a circular hoop, and we would like to find the electric field at this point. Uh, this is a point of a distance z uh, from the cent uh, away from the center of this circular hoop. So what we need to find is the electric field at this point, and we'll assume that the charge density of this hoop is lambda. So the trick to all these questions really is uh, <coughs> really always just setting up the uh, right integral, and uh, so we first have to consider a tiny piece of electric field coming from this hoop. So what's this tiny piece of electric field? So we have to consider a tiny piece of this hoop. We'll assume this part is infinitely small, and this part is d some variable, let's say phi. This angle is d phi. And uh, this radius r, uh, I'll assume it's constant in this case, So because this is just a circular hoop. So uh, this tiny part, this section here, this arc length, is r multiplied by uh, d phi. And the charge of this part is the length of this part multiplied by the charge density. So that's the uh, charge at this point. And then we, all we have to do is just use uh, Columns law. So we multiply by this constant and divide it by the uh, distance. So what's the distance? This distance is uh, be just r squared plus c squared. <coughs> the distance is, of course, this, uh, the square root of this, but uh, in Columns Law we have to square the distance, so uh, I'll just omit all of that, uh, all of those uh, signs. And uh, there's one thing we shouldn't forget is, of course, this is a, a vector, so uh, the horizontal components of this, of all, all these fields coming from this hoop, they all cancel each other out. As you can see, the, the horizontal component coming from this side is cancelled out by the horizontal component coming from this side so all we're left with is the uh, vertical uh, component now what's the vertical component? it's this multiplied by the sine of this angle we'll call that angle theta and what's this sine theta? we can find that by using tangent theta which is uh, of course z divided by r and uh, with this we can draw a triangle this as theta, and this would be z squared plus r squared. Then what's sine theta? Sine squared, so sine theta is, of course, wait, let me just copy this out. Sine theta is just z divided by this. And uh, <coughs> now all we have to do is to integrate both sides. So the electric field is total of adding up all these tiny components into this one joint field. And you'll see that the variable in this integral is uh, phi, and so all of these are constants. And uh, since we're considering a circle, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. And uh, this is just one of the easiest integrals ever. This, is, this entire thing is a constant. So all you have to do is just multiply by 2 pi. And then we're done. This is the electric field at this point. And uh, another interesting uh, problem to consider is what happens if this isn't just a hoop. This is a, a circular plate. So what we have to do then is to, mot uh, to, is to integrate this, uh, this electric field uh, with respect to dr because this is just a hoop, so if we are considering a plate, plate we'll have to add up an uh, uh, infinite amount of these tiny hoops into one giant plate. So in this case we'll have to uh, divide this uh, charge density into a surface charge density. This is just a line charge density. Its unit is uh, the field per, uh, per whatever kind of uh, distance unit you're using, but now we're going to have to uh, change it into a density per area, and uh, that's done easily enough. We'll let that be another constant sigma, and this will be our new charge density, and this is in terms of area. And uh, we'll have to multiply this by dr, because, and this dr comes from this, because if you multiply this by this, you'll get a line charge density. So what we're doing is just uh, taking this apart. So what we have essentially is another new DE, and uh, 
all we have to do now is really just to integrate this again. So we integrate this from 0, so from the center of the circle to whatever r you're going to extend this uh, plate to. So we'll let that be r. <coughs> and uh, solving this integral is easy enough. Let me just pull out all the constants first. Z is a constant, these are constants. So the only thing we have to do now is to solve this integral. And uh, that's easily, easily done enough. I think you'll recognize this as a simple case of u substitution. So we'll let that equal to u. du dr is 2r. So du is uh, 1 over 2 du is r dr. And uh, we'll just substitute that into this integral. So the range goes from when r is equal to 0, u is equal to z squared. When r is big R, then it's z squared plus big R squared. And uh, r dr, th that means these two, is equal to 1 over 2 du. And this bottom piece of junk here is really just u to the 3 over 2 power. And uh, let me transfer this up here. This integral is, of course, simple, simple enough. Wait, let me just copy the constants again. Now, uh, don't forget this 1 over 2 here, so I'll copy that out as well. And uh, now we have to integrate this. And that's really just this, right? I think you can show, you can prove this easily enough yourself. And this goes from z square all the way to c square, z square plus r square. And uh, again, we'll have to copy the constants. And uh, I'll pull the negative 2 out. And we'll substitute these uh, numbers in. So we'll get this minus this. And uh, basically, we're done already. But uh, there's an interesting limit that I'd like to show you. And uh, so these two twos cancel out. I'll move this uh, negative sign inside. So we have this. So we're basically done here. This is the electric field we're looking for. This points upward, of course. Don't forget this is a vector. I should really add the unit vector. So uh, this is the answer we're looking for. But if we, we can consider a limit in the case where uh, r extends to infinity. So in that case, we'll have a infinitely large plate. And when r extends to infinity, this whole thing is really just zero. So we're taking the limit when r goes to infinity. Then this goes to zero. Then we're left with this, right? And these cancel out, of course. And we're left with this. And uh, this is the famous formula of the infinite plate, char infinitely charged plate. And uh, this is very useful. You'll, I think you'll come across this in many different situations. And uh, yeah, so. That's how you solve this problem, and I hope this helped. I'll see you again next time.